Hello, I'm Sheldon Axler, the author of Linear Algebra Done Right. This video discusses part two of the section of the book titled Eigenvalues, Eigenvectors, and Invariant Subspaces. This video focuses on upper triangular matrices. We have previously defined the matrix of a linear map from one vector space to another with respect to two bases, one basis for the domain and the other basis for the target space. Now we are dealing with operators, which are maps from a vector space to itself. We define the matrix of an operator as previously, but now we just have one basis, a basis of the vector space V. It gets used in both the domain space and in the target space, which in this case are the same. Thus, if we have a basis V1 up to Vn of V, the matrix of T with respect to that basis is the n by n matrix determined as follows. For each k, we write t of vk as a linear combination of the basis vectors. Then we make the coefficients of that linear combination into the kth column of our matrix. If the basis v1 up to vn is not clear from the context, then we can write it in the notation, as shown in the last line here. However, usually we can write just m of t. Suppose t is an operator on v. We want to emphasize once again that the matrix of T is computed by using just one basis of V. Also, the matrix of T is a square matrix, meaning that it has the same number of rows and columns. Let's look at an example. Define T to be the operator on R3 given by the equation shown here. We'll think of the standard basis for R3. Then the matrix of T is the matrix shown here. The reason for that is that t of 1, 0, 0 is equal to 2, 0, 0, giving us our first column. For our second basis vector, t of 0, 1, 0, that equals the vector 1, 5, 0, giving us the second column here. Our third basis vector is 0, 0, 1, and t of that vector is 0, 3, 8, giving us the third column shown here. The diagonal of a square matrix consists of the entries along the line from the upper left corner to the bottom right corner. Let's look at an example. Consider the 3 by 3 matrix shown here. The diagonal entries are shown in red. Thus the diagonal entries are 2, 5, and 8. A matrix is called upper triangular if all the entries below the diagonal equal 0. Thus, the matrix shown in this example is a diagonal matrix. Notice some of the other entries can be 0. In this case, we have the entry in row 1, column 3. In other words, the entry in the upper right-hand corner. That entry is 0, but that's not a requirement. The requirement is that all the entries below the diagonal be 0. In this case of the 3 by 3 matrix, there are three entries below the diagonal. All three are 0. Thus, this is an upper triangular matrix. The next theorem is very useful. Suppose T is a linear operator on V, and V1 up to Vn is a basis of V. Then the following three conditions are equivalent. The first condition is that the matrix of T with respect to our basis is upper triangular. The second condition is that T applied to each basis vector V sub J is in the span of V1 up to V sub J. The third condition is that the span of v1 up to v sub j is invariant under t for each j from 1 up to n. You can see the proof of this result in the book, but the example on the left may help. Suppose that the matrix shown on the left of this slide is a matrix of t for some operator t on R3. Then t of the first basis vector is 2 times the first basis vector t the second basis vector is 1 times the first basis vector plus 5 times the second basis vector, and t the third basis vector is 3 times the second basis vector plus 8 times the third basis vector. Thus, it's easy to see that the second and third bullets of this theorem are satisfied. And the matrix T is indeed upper triangular. Please think about this for a few minutes to be sure that you understand what's going on here. 
Now we come to a really important result. Suppose V is a finite dimensional complex vector space and T is an operator on V. Then T has an upper triangular matrix with respect to some basis of V. In other words, with respect to some basis of V, which is not displayed here, the matrix of T looks like what you see on the screen. The asterisk in the upper right-hand corner denotes junk. In other words, everything above the diagonal, we have no idea of what that is. The zero shown below the diagonal indicates that everything below the diagonal is zero. In other words, we have here an upper triangular matrix. We should note that if the basis of V that gives this matrix is V1 up to Vn, then the first basis vector V1 must be an eigenvector of T with eigenvalue lambda 1. The reason for that is the way our matrix is formed, T of V1 must equal lambda 1 times V1. The other basis vectors might or might not be eigenvectors. The book gives two different proofs of this result. Be sure to read them and understand at least one of them. By the way, this result is not true on real vector spaces. This theorem fails on real vector spaces because an operator on a real vector space might not have any eigenvalues or eigenvectors. However, as we've discussed, the first basis vector that gives an upper triangular matrix must be an eigenvector. Thus, if T is an operator on a real vector space with no eigenvectors, then there's no basis with respect to which the operator has an upper triangular form. Our next result tells us that if we can find a basis of V with respect to which an operator T has an upper triangular matrix, then we can find all the eigenvalues of T. Specifically, suppose T is a linear operator on V and T has an upper triangular matrix with respect to some basis of V. Then the eigenvalues of T are precisely the entries on the diagonal of that upper triangular matrix. Below we show the matrix of T with respect to some basis, and as you can see, the matrix of T here is supposed to be upper triangular. Thus we can immediately say, according to this theorem, that the eigenvalues of T are lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda n. For the proof of this result, please see the book. Let's look at an example. Suppose T is the operator on R3 defined by the equation shown here. We've encountered this operator T earlier in this video. We saw then that the matrix of T is the matrix shown here. This is an upper triangular matrix. Where again, we are using the standard basis of R3. The entries on the diagonal of this matrix are 2, 5, and 8. Thus, this theorem tells us that the eigenvalues of T are precisely the numbers 2, 5, and 8. By the way, the result shown on this slide is valid for both real and complex vector spaces. However, on a real vector space, there might not be any basis of V with respect to which T has an upper triangular matrix. From our previous theorem, we do know that if V is a complex vector space, then there is some basis with respect to which T has an upper triangular matrix. This concludes part two of the video on eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and invariant subspaces.